Hi there, I'm Adam White. So you want to get started building projects. You want to start making awesome projects out of wood. But you have no idea where to start and what tools you need. Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm going to show you the basic tools that I use for most of my projects. You won't need every tool for every project. First, let's go over the hand tools that I use throughout a project. These are the absolute must-haves. A tape measure. It's used to mark wood for cutting and also to guide you when putting together a project. A 16-footer is all you'll really need for most of my projects. A speed square or a carpenter square. It's used to help you draw lines square to an edge. It's essential when cutting with a handheld saw and it's super handy when putting together projects. Six inches essential. 12 inch is nice to have. A drill bit set. I can't tell you how handy this little kit is. I use it throughout the house for everything from building projects to putting together toys, hanging picture frames, and fixing stuff. Clamps. Clamps are used to hold boards down while you cut and when attaching boards together. Make sure your clamps will clamp wide enough so you can see here to your tabletop. And a pencil. I use a pencil, a mechanical pencil. Some people prefer a carpenter's pencil. And for safety, eye and ear protection is a must have at all times. It's so much easier to work when you can actually hear and your ears aren't cringing from the saw motor where you're not squinting fearful something's gonna fly in your eyes. Next, tools to cut with. The easiest saw to cut with is a miter saw. This saw is fixed, so all you have to do is hold the board square against the fence and then just pull the saw board. This saw will give you very precise cuts with minimal effort. But a miter saw can be a little expensive, ranging from $200 to $700, depending on the features, like if you can cut angles or bevels, if it slides, you can cut wider with boards, and you'll eventually want all of those features. So I recommend saving up and splurging on the most expensive saw that you can afford. But what to cut with in the meantime? Well, for straight cuts and cross cuts, you can use this saw. It's a circular saw and it works pretty good. A circular saw is often come in a combo kit with a drill, the other must have power tool. And even if you already own a miter saw, you'll still need a circular saw for cutting plywood or boards that are too wide for your miter saw. This is a must have. For cutting curved cuts, you'll need a jigsaw. But a jigsaw is not as precise as a circular saw because the jigsaw blade can actually flex and bend as you're cutting, giving you a beveled cut. So you'll want to invest in a jigsaw for curved cuts, but it doesn't necessarily replace a miter saw or a circular saw. Table saws are nice to have, and I have one, and I use it all the time, but I don't think they're essential to a first or beginner project. And they're kind of challenging to use. Um, I'd invest in one as your woodworking skills improve over time. Once you have your wood cut, you'll need tools to start joining your boards together to make your project. The simplest beginner joinery method is simply a butt joint, meaning you simply butt two boards together and you attach. A drill is essential. I'd go for an 18 volt drill, an even better 18 volt drill and 18 volt impact driver kit that share the same battery. That way you can use the drill for drilling your pilot holes and the driver for driving your screws. So you have to keep switching the drill back and forth. A pocket hole jig basically enables you to pre-drill your holes from the underside so the screw holes are hidden. It also allows you to attach boards edge to edge. For a first project, you don't necessarily need one, but I highly recommend getting one as soon as you can. They really are all that. Another tool that I use quite a bit for joining boards is a nailer. You won't want to nail any joint that will take stress or movement, for example, a chair. But a nailer is great for things like attaching backs, trim, and face frames or other non-structural joints. Nails are also super easy to hide. So they're a great choice for a stain project. Always use glue with nails. Although nailers aren't essential for a first job, they are awesome to have. And you can use them throughout your house too. Think added to crown molding. I especially love the new cordless nailers. They work great. 
If I could have only one nailer, and most of my projects are indoor projects, I'd go for the 18 gauge nailer. Okay, so we've got cutting down and we've got attaching down. Now for finishing. You'll need a sander for sanding joints. I'd invest in a random orbital sander so you can quickly and easily do everything from removing rough patches to sanding joints and cut edges. It really is the most versatile of the sanders and you can get away with less different grits of sandpaper with a random orbital sander. Although a sheet sander, and I especially love this corner pad, can arguably do more finer finish work and reach into tighter places, it's nice to have but not as essential. Some other things that I recommend having are a shop vacuum for cleaning up sawdust. Get one that attaches to your saws and your sander and your fixes. And a shop vac will help keep your work surface nice and clean. You'll need a smooth, level surface to work on. Try to get a tabletop that you can easily clamp your project to. Finishing supplies like paint and sandpaper and brushes and drop cloths are essential. And that's pretty much it. These are the essentials to get started building. I'll be adding videos soon on how to use these tools, so make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.